Hello students, welcome back to the next session of the chapter life processes. So in the last session we have discussed about nutrition, uh, different modes of nutrition. So what is uh, nutrition? Nutrition means it is a process of taking in food. It is a process how the animals takes in the food and after taking in the food it has been broken and it has been utilized by our body. So it is the process of taking the food, breaking the food and utilizing the food is called as nutrition. So in that we have uh, learned about the classification. It has been broadly classified into autotropes and heterotropes. So under that we have learned about autotropes in the, studies, uh, in the last class. So autotropic mode of nutrition means it is a mode of nutrition in which they prepare their own food. The own food has been prepared by the autotropes. So mode of nutrition in which their own food is prepared by the autotropes is called as autotropic mode of nutrition. So they can, uh, the autotropic plants or autotropic bacteria, they can prepare their own food. So that mode of nutrition is called as autotropic mode of nutrition. So what are autotropes means? Autotropes means they are the organism which can prepare their own food. The organism which are the living organism which can prepare their own food, they are called as autotropes. So which under, comes under autotropes is, so it includes all the plants, you know, which organism can prepare their own food. They are the plants. Plants can prepare their own food. And I said some of the bacteria, some kind of bacteria, like I gave you example of cyanobacteria and acetobacter. So some bacteria as well as all the plants can prepare their own food. So we can call these organism as autotropes. So uh, how do they prepare their own food? They prepare their own food by the process called as, by the process known as photosynthesis. By the process of photosynthesis, the autotrophs can prepare their own food. What is photosynthesis? It is a process wherein green plants can prepare their own food by using the raw materials like carbon dioxide, water in the presence of sunlight by the help of a pigment called as chlorophyll, right? What is photosynthesis? Process by which a green plant or all the autotrophs can prepare their own food uh, by using the raw materials such as carbon dioxide gas, water, sunlight and in the presence of pigment called as chlorophyll. So even we have learned the important uh, events which takes place during the photosynthesis and how to write an equation, right? So how do we write an equation for photosynthesis? So we can write photosynthesis equation as so it's a process wherein carbon dioxide and water has been used up to produce a food called as a carbohydrate known as glucose plus oxygen. So here uh, in your reader they have given one more byproduct that is water. Even a small amount of water is also released during the photosynthesis. So you can include water also in the equation. So if you balance now the equation will be like C12 H2O, C6H2O6 plus 6 molecule of oxygen plus 6 molecule of water. So this is a uh, equation which is given in your reader. So you can write even the byproduct as just oxygen also. In some cases they write even water. So when you write water you have to balance it properly. So the, this takes place in the presence of sunlight with the help of a pigment called as chlorophyll. So this is the food prepared. So it will be prepared in the form of glucose, 6 molecule compound called as glucose and it will be stored in the plants in the form of starch. So this is photosynthesis and what is the event taking place during the photosynthesis? First is it is absorption of sunlight, absorption of sunlight, second is splitting of water into hydrogen and oxygen, third is reduction of carbon dioxide to form glucose, right? Trapping of sunlight and converting that light energy into chemical energy. Using that chemical energy, water molecule is split into hydrogen and oxygen. That hydrogen is used to reduce the carbon dioxide to form glucose, right? So this is what we have learned in the uh, last class. So now, uh, let us see which are the raw materials required for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. So how does the plants take this raw materials? How is this raw materials obtained by the plants. So the first material what it needs is carbon dioxide. So how do the plants 
takes in carbon dioxide. So the plants exchange the gases through an organ called as, so they have small pores and present on the leaf of the uh, plants through which they can exchange the gases. So that pores are called as, they are called as stomata. So what is stomata? It is a tiny opening present on the surface of the leaves is called as stomata. You can find the stomata present normally on the lower epidermis in the terrestrial plants. Lower epidermis you can find more number of stomata. So if you observe the stomata in your last year, if you had done the experiment, you might have been seen the stomatal structure under a microscope, right? So you can, they, where do you take that stomata from? You peel it out the lower epidermis of the leaf, right? So by peeling the lower epidermis, you are observing the stomata. That means more number of stomata is present in the lower epidermis of the plants, uh, which is there in the land. So terrestrial plants have a stomata present on their lower epidermis. So lower epidermis also we have discussed in the last class. So when you take the cross section of the plant, uh, cross section of leaf, you will have upper epidermis as well as lower epidermis. So in the lower epidermis you can see the stomata. So through the stomata it is taking in the gas, exchange of gases takes place through stomata. So how the exchange of gases actually happen by the help of stomata will be learning now. So this is the structure of a stomata. So stomata, single one is called stoma, many is called stomata. So this is a structure of open stomata here. In the open stomatal structure you can see there is two guard cells present and the guard cell is surrounded by the subsidiary cells, epidermis cells and you can find a nucleus within the stomata, uh, guard cells, you can find nucleus inside the guard cells and you can find the small green dot like structure that's they are the chloroplast in the stomata. So this is structure of a stomata. So how does the stomata uh, exchange the gases? So exchange of gases in stomata happens by uh, opening and closing mechanism of stomata. So stomatal guard cells can open and close. So by which it can exchange the gases and also it can uh, lose the water by transpiration process. This happens by opening and closing process of uh, mechanism of stomata. How does it happen? How does the stomatal pore open? So stomatal pore open when it becomes turgid. So turgid means it's a condition wherein the guard cell becomes swollen. It will be completely swollen. It will be filled with water and it becomes turgid. So when it becomes turgid, it is blowing, it is swelling. When it's swelling, what happens? It opens. Stomata opens. When it swells, the stomata opens. And when it is open, it will take in the necessary gases. Like carbon dioxide will be entering into the stomatal pore and oxygen will be released from the stomatal pore. So exchange of gases takes place and also there will be release of water molecule also happening from the stomatal pore. So how it is happening? That is when the uh, water, water molecules enter into the stomatal guard cells, it swells up, it becomes turgid. So it's a condition where it is becoming completely swollen. So when it's swollen, what happens? It will be pushing apart. The guard cells push apart. So when it push apart, what happens? The stomatal pore is opening. The reverse happens when it closes. So how it will be closing is, so during closing what happens is, the stomata release out the water. Water will be released from the guard cells. So guard cells removes the water. So when it removes the water, this uh, guard cell become flaccid. They will become flaccid and when it become flaccid, the stomata which is open, it will close like this. It is closing and then it stops the exchange of gases. So that is the mechanism happening in the stomata. So that is when the guard cells uh, takes in water, they become turgid and they swells and the stomata open. When the water is released from the guard cells, they become flaccid and the stomata closes. So this is the mechanism what is happening during opening and closing of stomata. That is how the uh, stomata can exchange the gases through the stomatal pore. So in the exam, they'll be asking you the diagram of open stomata and closed stomata. So in open stomata, you can see the stomatal pore has to be mentioned. Closed stomata, the pore has to be closed. And what the other uh, things present the stomatal structure, you can see it is having two guard cells. Within the guard, guard cells, you can find nucleus and you can find many number of chloroplasts present in the guard cells. Surrounded by that, it is having epidermal cell or subsidiary cells. So this, that's the mechanism of 
uh, stomatal opening and closing that is how the first raw material carbon dioxide is taken by the plants it is by the help of stomata what is the next one next one is water how does the plant takes in water that you know much familiar with that right so how does the plant get the water plant get the water from the soil by the help of its roots through the roots the plants will be absorbing the water so you will pour the water to the base of the plants from there from the soil the water gets absorbed by the roots and from the root it will be taken up till it reaches the leaves that is how the plants get the second substance that is water and the third thing is sunlight and chlorophyll so you know here photosynthesis after photosynthesis what is the final product you are getting is glucose so after using this uh, such and such kind of raw materials finally they are converting that into a uh, food called as glucose so how do we test that uh, test for that glucose whether the whether it has undergone photosynthesis or not whether it has been prepared the food or not so we do a simple test called a starch test to find out whether the leaf is prepared the food or not right that you have learned in your primary classes will be just repeating the same thing what will be done uh, to test for starch in the leaf so how we know which are the raw materials which is needed for photosynthesis so we need carbon dioxide uh, water sunlight and the pigment called as chlorophyll so by using the chlorophyll pigment itself a green plants can prepare their own food right so they need chlorophyll pigment so what is the function of chlorophyll pigment here it is a, a thing which will trap the sunlight so for trapping the sunlight the plants need chlorophyll pigment so how do we prove that chlorophyll pigment is necessary for photosynthesis so for that we take do a small experiment by using a croton plant here we can call it as variegated plant so variegated plant means so these are the example for variegated plants you can take a croton plant or you can take a uh, money plant so it's having two different colors so you can see it will be having light green color and it will be having a dark green patches over that so you have to take such kind of plants for the experiment so the plant which is having such kind of leaf is to be taken and you need to place this plant in a dark room for about three years so when you keep the plant in a dark room for three years what is happening is it is using all the starch which is already prepared in them so the plants start to prepare start to use up all the starch which is stored in them so the leaf uh, will be de-starch we call it as de-starching so what is de-starching de-starching means to remove the starch from it so when we place the plant in a dark room it is not able to undergo photosynthesis because it is not receiving sunlight so here we are also proving that even sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis so when we are keeping in the dark room it is not getting the sunlight and uh, it is not preparing the photosynthesis it is not undergoing photosynthesis so it is not preparing the food so whatever food is already prepared and stored in them in the form of starch that will be used up so it will not have any kind of starch or glucose in them which has been prepared when we take it out after three days after placing in a dark room so now we have de-starched the plant we have placed the uh, plant for three days in a dark room and uh, all the starch which is there in the plant has been used up so after de-starching what we had to do is we had to take out the plant from that uh, dark room and then we had to place it in sunlight for about one hour so when we place it in a sunlight for one hour what happens it start to prepare their own food it start to undergo photosynthesis and slowly the leaves start to prepare the food so where uh, it is again getting starch now then what we have to do is after keeping for about one hour we have to remove one of the leaf from the plant and test it for starch so how is the test for starch done is uh, when we test it for starch first what we have to do is we have to remove one of the leaf from the plant and we have to dip it in a boiling water take a beaker heat it and boil the water so into the boiling water we have to dip that leaf the leaf has to be dipped in a boiling water so what happened when you dip the leaf in the boiling water is uh, here the chlorophyll will be dead so the first step is to dip it in the boiling water so when we dip it in the boiling water the chlorophyll has been killed so we are making it to ensure that further photosynthesis is not happening so we uh, kill the chlorophyll 
second thing what we have to do is second thing is we have to dip it in a uh, beaker containing alcohol so we have to heat the alcohol in a water bath so we should not eat directly the alcohol we have to heat it in a water bath water bath means so we are boiling the water here so here there is boiling water so in that we are placing the beaker containing alcohol so into this alcohol solution we are dipping that leaf which has been dipped in the boiling water so when we do so what happens is so here we are killing the chlorophyll in this case we are removing the chlorophyll uh, in this case we are removing the chlorophyll from the leaves so you can see this solution turning to green color this alcohol solution turns green color because it has been having all the chlorophyll removed from the leaf now so we are dipping the leaf into the alcohol solution uh, by heating it in a water bath so that all the chlorophyll from the leaf will be removed so the green color of the leaf will be completely removed so it will become yellowish color so now here it doesn't have any chlorophyll pigment for further photosynthesis so now we can test for starch so this leaf has to be then test for starch so for that what we do is we take the leaf out and wash it by using cold water and then we have to add few drops of iodine into this so we are adding iodine drops so when we add iodine drops to this what you can see is the area where there is patch only in that much area you can see there is it is turning to a bluish black color so the area where there was green color patches that area is turning to bluish black color so what you can understand by this experiment is so where there is green colored patches it is the area where there is actually the chlorophyll pigment so chlorophyll pigment is present only in the greenish part of the leaf the creamish part of the leaf will not have that chlorophyll pigment so it is only the part where the chlorophyll pigment is there only in that much area photosynthesis is happening so when we are keeping the plant for the uh, plant in the sunlight for the after destarching it it slowly start to prepare the food i said so where is the food prepared now it is prepared only in the area where there is chlorophyll it will not be prepared here because here there is no chlorophyll so what you can understand by this food has been prepared only in the area where there is chlorophyll means chlorophyll is a necessary a material which is needed for photosynthesis so we can pr prove that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis so this test you have learned in your primary class starch test wherein you are adding iodine iodine turns Uh, blue black color on adding on to the starch so starch turns it to blue black color if you add iodine chemicals so now uh, we have proved that uh, chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis we also understood indirectly that when sunlight is also necessary for photosynthesis so now let us see carbon dioxide to show that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so we have a, another small experiment similar to this so what we have to do is we have to take two potted plant two potted plant if, if, again in the in this case also we have to place this plant three days in a dark room for de starching purpose we have to remove all the starch from the uh, plants by placing the plants in a dark room so when we place it for three days in a dark room all the starch which is there in the plants will be removed in both the plants and then we have to place this plant in sunlight and cover it with the bell jar so we are using bell jar here to make a separate atmosphere for this so we are creating a separate atmosphere by placing a bell jar so in this atmosphere what we are doing is we are placing a sor a saucer which contain potassium hydroxide so we keep a small plate which contain potassium hydroxide solution and in that jar there is nothing kept so so what happen here is what is the use of keeping potassium hydroxide here is So potassium hydroxide is a chemical which will absorb the carbon dioxide gas. So what is the potassium hydroxide place here is doing is it is taking all the carbon dioxide gas which is present in this atmosphere. So from this atmosphere it is taking all the carbon dioxide gas. So it has been absorbed. So what you can understand by that? So this atmosphere is not having carbon dioxide now. So carbon dioxide is not there. Every carbon dioxide has been removed by this KOH solution. Whereas here. it is having air which contain carbon dioxide so now we have to place this condition the setup for few hours and then we have to test for starch again the so same test has to be repeated again 
so what we can uh, understand by that is so after keeping for 3 years we remove leaf from each of this bell jar from bell jar 1 and from bell jar 2 we remove leaf from each so we test it for starch so leaf 1 from bell jar 1 and leaf 2 from bell jar 2 will be tested for starch so what you can find here is in leaf 1 you don't find any kind of color change but in leaf 2 you can find it will turn to bluish black color so when we test the leaf in the second bell jar we can see that it is turning to bluish black color so by that what we can understand is uh, it is showing a positive test result for starch so it is turning bluish black whereas when it tested for the same with the first bell jar leaf there it is not showing any color change so what you can understand here is there is no photosynthesis happened in this jar but it has happened in the jar 2 so here photosynthesis is happening but here it is not happening so why it is not happening here is because we have placed KOH here so KOH is absorbing the carbon dioxide so what you can understand by that is carbon dioxide is one of the essential condition necessary for photosynthesis without carbon dioxide there will be no photosynthesis happening so here since we are removing all the carbon dioxide here there will be no photosynthesis happening but there it is happening so by this experiment we can show that carbon dioxide is one of the necessary condition for photosynthesis so by this two experiment uh, what you have understood is so here the iodine test is done, done in the same way what we have done for the previous one so here what we did is we dip the leaf in the boiling leaf boiling water to kill the chlorophyll then we have to place it in the alcohol to remove the chlorophyll and then we have to uh, add few drops of iodine for testing so that is how we had done the iodine test here so by this two experiment what we have understood is chlorophyll and carbon dioxide is two essential condition necessary for photosynthesis process so without that two photosynthesis will not happen so there is one more condition that is sunlight to prove that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis so that will be discussing in the next session so we will meet you in the next session thank you